so you've seen how we can generate the electric field once we're given the potential we can of course go the other way to get from a given electric field to work out the potential and I'm going to use the same question as we did last week where we have a conductive sphere enclosed by a conductive shell which we use Gauss's law to work out the electric field fairly easily answer given here quickly putting it down where all the different variables is basically given by the sketch here so this we got already and from this E with the vector sign we are going to try and look for our potential at any given point so that we can answer some energy questions say if we are interested in if we have a particle that travels from this point to that point through whatever path how much energy does it gain or lose etc so the way to relate that of course is change in potential is equal to integrate between some points dl in this case we're going to use dr as my displacement just because it has an r dependence so we're going to move straight along some kind of radial line that goes outwards and we're going to use the assumption here with the potential of zero infinity so we start out with v at infinity is equal to zero so in this case in order to find for all space we're going to work from the outside in instead of the inside out because the definition is at the very very edge of the universe the potential is zero and because we have this piecewise function we're going to have to do each piece separately so first case we have r is greater than r3 this is the case where we're outside the shell even because the integral only gives us the change in potential to get the potential at any given point we need to do a slight change here so let's say the v at position r minus some original at infinity is what's actually given by the integral going from infinity to r of e dot dr so we actually have to throw this thing over so vr is equal to v at infinity minus with those limits that stuff now thankfully in our case this is zero by design actually and so we just take the integral the integral of e being out there is q2 plus q1 we can sum in the numbers later if we ever care to but so then with the dot product here we have both in the radial direction so this thing just becomes dr basically in terms of just the magnitude because it's parallel and we're integrating with r to the minus one so we have r squared underneath which is r minus two when we integrate it we're gonna be we're gonna get negative of k q2 plus q1 over just plain old r with a negative in front which then gets us we're gonna make these positive and we're left with k q2 plus q1 over r minus something over infinity which is zero and there you go so this first part as you might imagine a circle shell on the outside of that you look at the total charge and it acts like a point charge so the electric field acts like a point charge so the potential also acts like a point charge so the next step we're going to be inside the conductive shell when we did electric field it's really fun because you just put a big fat zero now you do put a big fat zero but not quite because it's the change in potential that is zero in this case so what are what two points are we comparing we're actually comparing with one point where we know the last point we know as we come in from infinity it's right here when r is equal to r3 so that's my limit to start in r3 and work further inwards to this particular point r so in other words a zero electric field all that means is that the potential is constant because there's no change in potential 
doesn't mean potential zero. There's no change. So it's whatever it is on the outside would be the same all the way throughout. This is represented as that. That's a change. That's equal to zero. So VR is just equal to V. And what the potential is R3. And when the potential is R3, it's given by the expression we worked out from up top here. With R subbed in as R3. So then for that whole region, it's going to hold at that particular potential. So this is the key difference, I guess, in working out electric field versus potential problem. Potential, you do have to think about we're only getting the change, so we have to kind of go from the outside, usually zero and infinity, and come in, and then work our way step by step inwards. Next step, we're going to be between R1 and R2, which is basically between the sphere and shell. So in this case, we will have VR is equal to VR2. That's the last known position minus the integral because final mass original. So we're going to start at R2 and end up at R. The expression for integrating in this case is KQ1 over R squared. Again, because we have the radial direction dotted with each other, they work out nicely to give us just dr. This one we take from the last result, minus. And this we've basically already done. It's the same as the last one. Subbing in the limits of integration, canceling out that negative sign, that's what we get. And then last but not least, we have inside the sphere itself. This is again a case where E is equal to zero, so change in V is equal to zero. So everywhere VR, oh, of course greater than zero, you can't have a negative R. VR everywhere is equal to whatever potential it was when it was at R1, which we take the last result and sub in R1. And just to put it all together to show you in kind of graphical form what it all looks like, the points of interest we're interested in is 4CM, 6CM, 8CM. And if we do actually plug in the numbers, in the very center, this whole mess works out to be about that, some number. So we'll say it's up here, positive. And it starts from the middle, all constant, until you get to R1. And you sub in and you can either use this result with R equals R2, which actually these two cancel out and you're left with just this thing which is the same as this result. And calculator work gives you that it's actually about negative 470 or something like that. And the relationship looks a little messy, but it's still more or less a one over R kind of relationship. So it kind of curves like this. Then it becomes constant again until it gets out to outside the spherical shell, at which point you get a one over R dependence as it goes out asymptotically goes towards zero. So both of these basically have a one over R dependence because sphere looks like a point charge. And then you have inside the conductor, some region of constant potential because E is equal to zero everywhere inside a conductor at equilibrium. So somewhat similar to working out the electric field. So for electric field, we would use Gauss's law and we would go from the inside out, whereas for constant V, knowing the electric field, we would integrate from infinity and coming from the outside inwards.